Howdy. Welcome. Uh, this is a new segment um, that I like to call Pipe Thoughts. As you can see, I smoke a pipe. Uh, so family, friends, if you're watching this, I hate to break it to you this way, but I smoke a pipe. Now, before you get on me and start ripping me about asking bass bad for your health, it's not as bad as cigarettes. It's not as bad as vaping. It is not cigarettes or vaping because you don't inhale it. You don't inhale the smoke. You simply take it into your mouth. You taste the tobacco. You taste the leaves. You taste the wonderful gift of tobacco that God has given us, and you exhale. You don't even exhale, you just let the smoke roll out of your mouth. It is the way that pipe, it is the way that tobacco was intended to be used. Natives did it. Sir Walter Raleigh did it. He was a, he was a British explorer in the Renaissance era. British poet. And, uh, yeah so don't get on me and if you're gonna say oh it's gonna catch up to you one day well all gotta die of something may as well enjoy your time while you got it um what exactly is this segment well i've been i've been inspired by a youtuber here on this channel called Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, he's an older gentleman that he smokes a pipe as well. And I, I don't want to say that his videos inspired me to start smoking a pipe. Um, whether or not Dwayne would be mortified or elated at the fact that a younger man such as myself has taken up the hobby, I cannot discern. I would choose. I choose to enjoy that he would be happier, uh, that I'm not smoking cigarettes or doing vape, uh, because cigarette smokers and pipe smokers are completely different breeds of people. Cigarette smokers are simply there to get their fix of nicotine and move on with their day. Pipe smokers they take time in what they do they gotta pack the bowl clean the bowl light the bowl everything and it takes time you can't just say all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go light me up a pipe i'll be right back you're gonna say you want to light a pipe with me let's talk and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk i'm basically stealing uh duane's videos um but the reason I've started doing this is because he has inspired me um, to start these sorts of videos because he, he talks about a lot of things on his channel that are very inspiring to younger people like myself and others that I feel there's a, lot, a good lesson to be learned about it. And, uh, yeah, I, I always found it was easier to, not necessarily easier, but there's just something about hearing another younger person talk about life experiences that's a little bit more digestible than an older person speaking of it. Because, you know, human nature, we just tend to think, oh, well, they're they're old, they, they don't know what they're talking about, when they do, um, but that's just human nature, you know, but if there's somebody that's your age talking about it, you're, you're a little bit able, more able to listen, and being that I am a younger person, I do not have the wisdom, nor do I have the knowledge that Dwayne over there at Dry Creek Wrangler School does, but I do feel that I have a different outlook on life than a lot of kids my age, and I'd like to share 
some of my thoughts and that's the beauty of youtube is that you can get on here and you can say whatever the heck you want ideally um and if there's an audience they'll watch it um that sir walter raleigh he's a poet he's an english poet and i want to talk about one of his poems tonight um my senior year of high school in our English class, we were supposed to pick a poet from the Renaissance era, talk about their poetry, and their their life and all that. And so I picked Sir Walter Raleigh because of his tobacco company. But he had a poem that I that I really it really stuck with me. It's called As You Came from the Holy Land. And the thing with poetry is that they say that the that poetry is in the eye of the beholder. And what that means is that everybody reads the same poem, but it can mean many different things to many different people. To me, what that poem is, is it begins off with an older man asking a younger man, Hey, you've come from wherever it is that you just came from. Have you seen the most beautiful woman in the world? And the younger man says, Well, sir, I've seen a lot of beautiful women. And uh, how, how do I know which one you're talking about? And he describes this very fair, beautiful woman. And the young man says, Yep, I know precisely who you're talking about. How do you know her? And he says, well, I used to date her. And the young man goes, used to? Well, what the heck, man? What do you mean used to? You should still be with her. Why, why aren't you? And the old man says, well, young love is dumb love. I was a young fool. And it wasn't true love. One of the biggest problems that I see with my generation, one of the things we struggle the most with, is love, affection. A lot of us are worried that we will never find the right person, myself included. and. What you got to realize is, if you're young like us, us, I say, this is if, if you're a younger person watching this. If you're, if you're young like me or, you know, other kids my age, you, you got a lot of life to live. But you're scared of what the future holds and you want to find a person that you can walk, walk through the fire with, right? But you got to, you got to, you got to walk through the fire in order to find the person that you get that you want to walk through the fire with. And when you think you found the right person, it ain't it. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. They run around, they cheat, they do whatever. That ain't it. But you were so sure, right? You were so sure that it was the right person and it wasn't. Whether they cheated or whether you cheated, you know, for, for whatever reason it ended. You're devastated. And you figure, I will never find the right person. You look at yourself in the mirror and you think, there is no way that that is ever going to find a husband or a wife. There's no way. You find yourself in a hole. Um... Whether they dug it and put you there or whether you dug it and put yourself there. You're in that hole nonetheless. And it's dark. It's infinite darkness. And you don't see a light. But as time goes on, it starts to rain. Right? You're down in that hole. And there's water coming up to your knees and you're thinking my god i'm going to die 
this is going to be the death of me. I... I, I'm not going to survive this. Whatever hole that is, whether it's a breakup, um, a loved one passing, whatever it is, that water starts to seep up to your knees, then it gets up to your waist, then it gets up to your chest, all the way up to your eyes, and you're thinking, it's going to kill me. I'm going to drown in this hole, and they're going to find my bloated corpse down here. Um, but as time goes on and it keeps raining find yourself you're starting to float <laughs> and keeps raining keeps raining and you start getting closer to the top eventually you get so far up there that you pull yourself out and you look at yourself you're dripping wet but you realize that you've got more muscle more sinew in yourself than you had before because you've been spending all that time treading water. And if you've ever treaded water, you know it gets tiring after a while. What I mean by this, all this figurative language, is that you have to keep treading water. No matter what hole it is, if you just went through a breakup, if you think you're never going to find the right person, if you're lonely keep treading water you're in a hole just keep treading and if you don't then eventually you will you will lose out on what you could have had and that, that's a different that's a different subject um but you gotta you got to believe that someday, that someday you will find the end of that. You will find the edge of that hole. And eventually, as time goes on, you'll find another hole that you will fall face first in. But if you keep treading water, keep treading water, you'll find yourself pulled out of it. And you'll be walking on solid ground. Never give up. See, I'm. This is my. I'm copying uh, Dwayne's videos there at Dry Creek Rowinger School. This is basically. I'm, this is basically the exact same thing just told from a younger man's perspective and like I said I could be wrong I could be completely wrong and if I'm wrong then I'm wrong but I believe that if you, no matter where you find yourself if you just keep trying and you just keep pulling yourself up and you just keep treading water that someday you will find the right woman or man that you will find the light at the end of the tunnel you will find the job that is for you. You will find the life that you want to live. And if you're treading water in a hole that you think you're never going to pull yourself out of, you will find that you will have eventually pulled yourself out. Maybe maybe what you thought you wanted isn't exactly what you wanted. That's all a part of it. By treading water. Maybe... Maybe, just as an example, let's say a relationship. If you keep falling in holes, and you keep pulling yourself out, and you keep falling in more holes, maybe you're in a hole that is in other holes. I know that doesn't make much sense. But maybe you'd be happier off without anybody. And I know that doesn't seem... That seems... It seems like the, it doesn't seem like I'm saying much right now, but maybe you're finding yourself in a hole that you put yourself in and that you don't know you're in it. And that's exactly, I'm just, I'm basically just copying Dwayne, guys. But, uh,.
I encourage you to go check out Dwayne Knowles' channel over there at Dry Creek Greenville School. And if you're a if you're a younger man or a woman like me, maybe this has helped you in some little way. But my goal here was just to simply take his words and put them into my words and maybe if you were if you're a younger person that it's a little easier to listen to being that I am a younger man myself because like I said before it is it is hard um, no matter what your intentions are it's hard to to listen to older people and and take everything they say at, at value and get it and go yeah they're right you know I mean not that you don't want to but it's hard because you feel like they're they're not there they don't know what you know they don't you feel like you, they don't know what you're going through and that's another thing is that you think that the hole that you're in my pipe just keeps going out I, I don't know what the deal is I'm a little new at this is like I said I just started this But you think that the that the hole that you're in is the only hole that anybody has ever fallen in like that one. Be it a breakup, just for the sake of example. If it's a breakup, you think this is the worst breakup that anybody's ever ever had. And you know that's not true. You know that there there's worse breakups. Say 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 you two left amicably, right? And you're still good friends. But you think that that breakup is the worst that anybody has ever gone through. And you know that's wrong, but in your mind, subconsciously, you're telling yourself that this is it. This is the worst it's ever going to be, that it's ever been. But you just keep treading water. And you find yourself out of it and you pick up and you carry on but it takes time it takes time you got to trust in the process I know you feel like you you want to get rid of that pain right now and you never want to feel it again right that's the joy of life that's that's the beautiful thing about life is that you'll find yourself in those holes when you come out of them, you feel like you feel like you can take on the world, and you try to take on the world, and you find yourself in another hole again, right? But you find a way back out of the hole, and that's that's the beauty of it. Is that life is full of ups, downs, and sideways twists, turns, and crossroads, and everything. And if you're a young man like me, you haven't begun. You haven't begun to learn or live. You haven't begun to live or learn. Wisdom and knowledge takes time. And you haven't had time. If you've been walking the earth for 20 years, 21 years, however long you've been on this earth, you're just beginning. Whether or not you believe in the afterlife, that's up to you. But eventually, whether you believe there's life after death, that doesn't matter because say 60 years goes by. You've learned a lot. You've lived a lot, but you haven't finished. You'll still find holes, even when you're that age. Maybe this has helped some of you. Maybe it hasn't. Maybe I'm just just rambling, but this has gone on for 20 minutes. And uh, I apologize for the audio. I'm filming this on an iPhone. But uh, maybe this has helped you. If it hasn't, I apologize. 
but if it has, share it. Share with people. Maybe it'll help them too. Um, and if I have no idea what I'm talking about, just be sure to let me know down in the comments. Anyways, folks, that's all I got for you tonight. We'll see you next time. Take care.